Steinweg, and welcome to the, well, the Meadow Railroad. Uh, my family had been creating and uh, playing with trains all our lives. Our, our dad started, uh, my, my other brothers and I, onto it. Even when we were kids at Christmas, he would set them up the night before, and we'd come down, and there would be a train layout. And we did that all through our childhood, and then even in my own family over the years, we would each Christmas put a, a layout a layout together over uh, over the holidays and uh, now that I'm at the point where I have the space and I have a garage to work with I wanted to recreate that experience in an area here in the garage the display you see here is seven feet by 17 feet and uh, I have some specific ideas in mind the platform is is built upon a, a two by four construction um, using three-quarter plywood uh, as its main base here. And then you can see how I skirted it around the outside with, with uh, beadboard and then even put a little bit of plexiglass here to, to protect the trains from falling off and, and, and clamp them against. And then I have access through two different areas. This is one of the areas where it has access to the underneath side. The, um, once it's down, then we use... Uh, put the foam boards down in some areas that I wanted to have slightly higher than others because it just looks better if it's not all on one level. And then from there, uh, built the ramps and the, the grade changes using um, products by uh, Woodland Scenics and others where you can, uh, it helps you to do the grades necessary for the construction. And then um, I was, it was important to me to get as much of the electric done as I could beforehand, so I ran some of the electrical blocks, connection blocks in the main lines, uh, only to come to find out that so much more had to be done when it came time to put all the buildings in and all the switches, but at least I got a good head start by putting a lot of the electrical in before I put the top on uh, for best access. A, a drawing package, the first time I ever did it, it's, it's the SCARM drawing package, and it's, it's like a CAD program. You can lay the the, the layout out just the way you want to see it and it comes with the, uh, the brands of, of track and that you're going to be using so it's very accurate to the spec and you can lay it out just the way you want it and so what I have here in the drawing and what we have here on the platform is a loop to loop concept meaning that while it's not directly apparent the, the first outer loop uh, goes to goes to an inner loop, and then the inner loop goes to an outer loop. So you have a kind of dog boat effect, where you can run two trains at one time, or you can run one train, and it'll be a continuous loop uh, going both forward and reverse through the tracks. What's about the SCARM system is it has both a 2D and 3D layout. You can do a a 2D design, or you can flip to 3D and you can look at it as if it would be set up and you can look at it from different angles and it even adds things like buildings and trees to give it a, a very realistic feel of what your future layout is going to be. You can even have trains running on it to test out all of your connections and all, your, um, all of your switches. I wanted to have a layout that I could have access to and, and after I worked on it, a couple different directions. I realized at one point in time I had to put in some some kind of entrance way to get more towards the center of the layout. So if you can notice here, the way it's designed is this is a, a swing bridge comes up. You have to elevate the hinges slightly so that as you elevate it, you're not pinching against the rails themselves. So it pulls away as it flips. And then on the opposite side, you can run your electricity on up through and your connections to each one of the, the pieces of track. This gives me access into the layout so I can reach in to any area uh, that I need to where there's anything active that I can get to. And then when I'm done, I simply close the hatch, make sure we're lined up and we're ready to go. The other thing I experimented with on this layout is, is the use of water. I, uh, I wanted to have a, a water scene and a pond scene. and So what I used here is the uh, realistic water uh, that's available through Woodland Scenics. It's, it's really a type of furniture building epoxy where it's, it's very hard and dries very clear and very nicely. It doesn't contract or crack. And so it works very well for realistic water. So I put the water in in a couple of layers and I gave it some texture for the waves. Um, the system runs down here through a brook system and on down into a culvert. 
Uh, this area down here, I just basically use PVC pipe. Uh, it runs underneath the track and ultimately comes out here on this side and uh, down out past the, the platform. I really enjoyed working with the, the water uh, and the streams. What I have here is a, a drain coming out of the side of the mountain. And then as it rolls down through the, the stream, you know, it gathers towards the bottom here where it joins the stream that comes over from the pond we had earlier. Um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting, you, you, you want to pay attention to natural situations that occur in nature where you have boulders that come in little groups. And what that does is that creates pockets of pools of water for you, which is realistic with what you actually see in nature. Growing up as a kid, what I would do layouts, and I think all of us uh, that do this either used a paper mache or a plaster Paris on screen, and that can really get messy. And um, I, there had to be a better way. And what I discovered in doing this was some products that are out on the market now. One is called Great Stuff. You've probably seen this. And then there's other brands that are out there. GE just came out with one. But what this does is it allows you to fill into areas uh, and to build up your scenery without worrying about putting screen down or plaster of Paris. You can spray the spray foam down and then with a knife or a small saw, you can cut away at it and shape it the way you want. And it, it gives you a very generous portion to work with as you go through. So then after it gets done, you can come in and paint with, um, and you can see close up here, you, 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 can, you have almost what look very natural looking rock formations in through here. I simply just dabbed it with some paint when I was done and it turned out to be a really nice touch and a very easy product to use in the process. I left a portion of the layout open here where you can see how I constructed the mountains. Uh, this is a simple uh, insulation foam that you can buy at any home center and then you, you glue it in place like you would in contour lines in a mountain. And then I used the great stuff that I mentioned here earlier to, to come in and fill in the layers between and then let that dry and then carved it. Um, this, this here is a material that you can buy. It's actually a foam material that looks like rock, but it bends very nicely to create that, that cliff look that you see there. The use of the spray foam is also very helpful in creating these changes in terrain that you see here. Um, and one of the things that I did was I use a, a, a multi-tool that is available from DeWalt and other people. <laughs> But what this does is it allows you to carve into the, uh, the foam to give you that realistic look of rock. And it, it's so much easier than, than trying to carve into plaster of Paris or other things. The other nice thing about this material is you can just plug trees in anywhere you want. You know, trees come in and go out and they can be plugged in at will. And I, I do like a lot of trees on a, on a platform. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. The other area where I made use of this tool was this whole area is elevated with the foam uh, material, the insulation that I showed you earlier. And what I did with it is I used it to carve into the streets to keep the streets down to, to allow for more of a three-dimensional look. And then came back afterwards with plastic, uh, painted plastic here to give me this curb effect here. But it really helped me get a nice 3D uh, platform look. And then what I actually used for the road surface was asphalt patch, which you buy for driveways. So it gives you true, real asphalt surface. You know, when you're creating something like this, you use all kinds of tools and all kinds of techniques. And uh, it's really good to have this in my garage because then I have everything right next to me that I need. And so I just want to show you some of the real critical things that I found helpful. In, in creating the layout. Some of the tools that just become so necessary over time. A soldering station, both a stationary soldering station, this one by Weller, and then they also have a portable version that I can use out onto the track. Um, you, you never go wrong with a small vacuum cleaner because you just want to keep cleaning up the little areas. This is a little miniature vacuum I got online. It's really nice, very effective, works very well. Um, the other things that I used a lot of were wire stripping products, wire crimping, and, and these are called suitcase, suitcase clamps, and then these are solderless connectors, and you use those along with a, with a special pair of pliers that, that clamps those solderless connectors onto the wires that you're joining. 
used a lot of this underneath the platform. And then it always helps to have a full range of pliers that are available to you so you can uh, work those, hold things in place. I found some really useful tools are, are different probes and small uh, hooks and picks that work well to, to manipulate things, particularly when you're soldering, holding things in place while you're doing your soldering. So let's give them a, let's give them a run. You can see I have the, the CSX running on the outside and I have the, uh, the steam locomotive running on the inside. I also have a Norfolk Central system, up, Norfolk Southern now. They, they haven't been good boys lately as we've seen in the news, so we're just sort of keeping them on their own up there. They're gonna, they're gonna take a tie out. But we have these other trains running. I also have the ability to run this Conrail over here that you see. The Conrail is, is, is on the inner track. And I'm able to do this because I can, I can isolate sections of the train. I have different loops and sections that I can make active. Right now, not all of them are shut off, all my side rails are shut off. But if you look like along the side here, if I want to activate these, these, these runs here, I can do so. You see the lights come on, various places I had to tell me that that's an active section of track as we go along. Um, then I have a, a switchboard here that's much like what you might see in a, an actual switchyard where each one of the 17 switches is wired automatically to each one of the locations so I can adjust the directions of the trains and the, and the loops that they're on and put trains on the sidings and then I can activate them or deactivate them based on the switches below. Of course, you can imagine all the wiring that goes into the, the creation of something like this. Um, that was a challenge in and of itself and probably deserves a whole separate uh, presentation, but I do keep I do keep one board very visible here where I can get to the main connections where I have all three transformers coming into one location here, and I can adjust the, the bigger part of the platform, the bigger segments of it. Then the whole set just turns off with a flip of a switch. I chose the Lion Chief system. It's a system by Lionel that is really very simple, and Lionel has a much more complex system. Uh, but what I like about the Lion Chief is it's fully Bluetooth enabled. I can control the trains. I can control up to six trains if I want. Uh, blow the whistles, connect, disconnect the trains. I like it because it's a simple system. And if you have children, grandchildren, it's, it's really an easy system to understand. So also a goal of the layout was to have a place where you could just do some fun stuff with the layout. That besides me running the trains or others running the trains, there's a place where you can play with lights and switches and, and get and experience some of what's on the layout. I call this kind of the kids section. Um, from here, I can do a lot of things. Uh, one of the more enjoyable is this crane system here. I can I can raise and lower uh, a, a magnetic magnet over top of cars, pick up materials and dump them from the top track down to the bottom track. Then there's things like car lights. If you can look out on the layout, you can, you can see I can turn the car lights off and on all of the cars. There are uh, uh, bridge lights that lights up the bridges along with crossings that, that flash back and forth. You can see there they, they cross over back and forth. There's billboards in the corners that can turn off and on. And then finally there's a, a group of action switches that I have there that I can turn on that do a couple things. One is a paint platform here. This is a K-Line product. A, a, painting the, the car. This is a construction site here. Uh, then we have the tower with the guys running around in circles, I guess. And then over here on, on the side of the hill, there's a person putting off and on a billboard sign. And so it's fun to have things like that that uh, kids can touch and play, and I guess adults too. Woodland Scenics offers a lot of options in terms of buildings, but also the lighting effects can be a lot of fun. You'll see here in these pictures, I got the, the car lights on. Of course, the buildings themselves, they can be adjusted and have the lights turn off and on using um, a st staggered lights and also dimming effects. I could light the, the flag here and then even going away, you can see where the, the billboard can be turned off and on uh, as, we, as we look around the track. And so I, I just wanted to give a lot of flexibility to the lighting of things that I could turn off and on. Another fun thing I found was lighting. You can get some very inexpensive LED lights these days and, 
You can control them from your phone even. I can change the tone of what's on the platform to different colors to give different effects of nighttime or dusk or dawn. And that's done from simply hanging two LED light systems above as you see here. And I, again, I can control them from my phone and, and make them brighter or dimmer uh, however I want to do it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the model railroad uh, called we call Meadow Railroad. Uh, it was my goal in showing this to you how you can create a, a very fun, usable and practical train layout in a relatively small area and just enjoy the joy of creating it and decorating it and uh, just making it a, a, really a wonderful hobby that it is. So uh, thank you for joining us and happy model railroad.